Hello, colleagues. Good afternoon. How are you? Can you hear us? Can you see us? <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much for your time. As promised, I've got um, Scrum Coach uh, Julian and uh, Captain Marius Lowe. Uh, we've got about 10 minutes for the session, guys. It's double header weekend. Uh, first match is Zebra versus the Bulls at one, followed by Emirates Lions versus Leinster at four. Uh, guys, if we can start the session by, I don't see any hands. If you can raise your hand so we can get going. Oh, whoever's ready to go can go. Yeah. All right, Liam. Yeah, Oscar next one. Something like that. Can't hear anything. Can you guys hear us? Yes, we can. Okay, okay. Uh, I think Liam, your hand was up. Okay, we'll skip Liam for now. Uh, can we get the next question, guys, please? Okay, Dylan, you can go, and then we'll take Liam. Thanks so much. Um, hi, guys. Hope you're both well. Um, I don't know if you've got a chance to have a look at that um, Leinster squad that they're sending over, but it's a fairly youthful team. Um, do you read anything to that, and what are you expecting from them? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that one, Dylan. Uh, yeah, we did see the team coming. Uh, I think, uh, Dylan, for us, this last couple of weeks, we've had a massive focus on ourselves. And that was the chat this morning in the team room after seeing their squad coming over. As they are on the number one on the log, and they've played with this team for a number of times. So, uh, yeah, it's a really good setup they have at the end. It's a really good team. So, you ask if we read anything into it, uh, not not too much. Really trying to put the focus on us, and, and this week the focus is really putting putting in the detail the little things, doing the little things right uh, uh, to get us get us closer to where we want to get to. Thanks, Dylan. Uh, Liam. Still not. Can you see the box out? Can you some? Can you hear me now? Yes, now we can. Hi. Uh, sorry, guys. I don't know if you can hear me. We yeah, can. can. Yeah, you know. Oh, okay, fantastic. Um, yeah, sorry for the inconvenience there. Um, my question is for Marius. Um, if one looks at the last two games and your your position on the log, obviously you can still qualify. So how do you how do you approach this? Do you approach this one game at a time or? Have you sort of looked at both games thinking like, okay, this is what we need to potentially get in? I mean, is it, uh, can one look at it that way at all? Uh, to be honest with you, uh, Liam, the best we can do is focus on ourselves, like as Jules said, and uh, we'll take it one game at a time. And to give us the best chance is to give, uh, is to get five points and to give the other team no points. So if we can control, we can only control what we can and, and that will be the best scenario for us is to get five and give them nothing. So there's no change in mindset in the way you go about your business at all? No, no. Uh, no, I don't think there's any change of mindset. Uh, as a matter of fact, we just want to keep on growing and, and go even harder. Thanks. Thanks, Liam. Um, can you some? Thank you very much, guys. Um, Liam asked, well, what I was going to ask, but I do have a different question. Um, Julian, um, good afternoon. Just Hello. tell us more about what you guys have taken out from your European excursions and how do you want to apply it to these two critical matches mm -hmm. starting on Saturday? Oh, that's a good question, Kenny. So I think for us, this year was the first year playing the URC and the EPC at the same time. Uh, and I'll, to be honest, I think I'll keep you busy with a list of what we've learned. Uh, and, and how we can take this going forward. I think um, we've every week has been growth. Every week there's new things that we've that we've learned and and try to apply. And um, yeah, that's that's how I think we we're growing as a team. Uh, the guys are really quick to adapt, 
really quick to learn. So really proud of the boys. All learning so fast, and 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 you now it's one thing learning, but then applying what they've learned, and and that's the growth we've seen, and that's just carrying on. I don't think it was more this weekend and previous weekends. I think every weekend you learn a lot, you grow, you get better, and if you do that cycle con consecutively and um, consistently, uh, then we'll get growth. Thanks, Kemo. We'll take I uh, sorry, Carl, and then Ati. Julian, you just opened yourself for a lot of questions. You learned a lot and the guys has adapted a lot and your recent results has shown that. What would you change? And I'm not necessarily talking about the lines. What would you as a South African franchise like to change in the whole setup going into the 2024 season? No, I think that's also a really good question. And I think it's uh, the answer is going to lie outside of the two of us. And according to I'm not throwing a question out to go over myself, but I think, uh, like Mara mentioned uh, earlier in the conversation, is we can only control what we can control. So what we can control is what we do between the four white lines. And then if you ask me what we can do better with, between the four white lines, I think. We've seen when our error rate is low, then we do better. So these uh, some of the European teams, they concede very few errors. And then if you concede more than them, they're going to be in it. So, so on the field stuff, there's a lot of things I think we can learn from especially the Irish teams and some of the Scottish teams and then the most of the South African teams. So there's a, a, a from playing against these, uh, well, you know, the new teams we've played against now the last last couple of years. Is that the answer you were looking for? <laughs> I was just thinking, if you don't make it as a coach, you could go and dance also, because this was quite nice, yeah. Thanks for that call. Uh, IT? Um, thanks, Kenny. So, afternoon, everyone. Uh, my question uh, will be for Maris. Maris, just looking at um, how is the mood within the dressing room? You know, also considering the possibilities that um, this might be the second season in the URC, you guys um, do not, you know, make it to the playoffs. You know, does that sort of weigh heavy um, on, on the guys? How are they shouldering that? Yeah, I think, you know, in the locker rooms, uh, everything has been, you know, growing and getting a lot better. And um, I think you can see that in the way we perform and play for each other on the field. Um, so I think, you know, that um, for what happens in the camp actually goes onto the field. And I, and I think there's been a lot of positives. So, um, yeah, we're not out of it completely. So I wouldn't necessarily throw us out of the bus yet. But um, like I said, we'll just do what we can as best as we can for as long as we can. And then uh, we'll see how that goes. Thanks, Ati. Is there anyone else call? I see your hand is up. Was that from the previous question? No, All right, Morgan. Uh, Morgan. Hi, thanks. Yeah. Hi, Julian. Hi, Morris. Morris, Leinster are playing on the high field for the first time. They've played in Bloom before. They've played in Durban, Cape Town. Um, is this something that you guys are taking into account that, that you want to use it as another weapon in your arsenal? Or do you feel that rugby these days, guys are becoming more professional and more climatized because of traveling around so much? No, I, I wouldn't say that. I've played, when I was at the Sharks, I've played in Alice Park multiple times. You never get used to it. So <laughs> um, traveling here is definitely uh, something we look at. Obviously, wanna, they, they, they obviously a very professional team and, and they a team that pride themselves on work rate. You can see that. So it's not that they will ever give up, but um, uh, we do want to play that into our favor. Um, they haven't been here, and uh, we want to just yeah throw throw as much punches as we can. Thanks, Morgan. <laughs> Thanks, Morgan. Uh, who's that? Uh, can you see another one? Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Nyani. So, Julian, how much have you guys missed uh, Emmanuel Chituka? Um, and I think also if you just if you can refresh, if you refresh my mind correctly, I suspect that. Um, Royal Fielder will also be out. How important has that 
um, the, the absence of the of the physical components being to the lines, especially over the past two weeks. Yeah, I think so. We, the the effects of losing uh, quality players like that is felt. But what is exciting to see is the guys stepping in, then taking over, and then almost like putting up their hands. So that's the thing about rugby. No player stays on the field forever. And no player stays off the field forever. So it, it's good to see when when you lose a quality player like Ruan or Manu, uh, whoever steps up into his spot, he, he slots in well and he does the job then for us as well. Um, to answer your question, I think most of this, we always miss whoever's not playing for us because every guy brings his own personal circus act towards a team. And we use that as best as we can to make the team better. But then when the next guy comes in, he uses his circus act to give us this, uh, uh, not the same, but give us the same attributes towards the team to do his best he can for the team. So, yeah, we do miss the guys not, not on the team, but we're excited for the guys in, showing us what they can bring this weekend. Cool. Thanks, Mr. Guys. Um, any other questions, guys? I don't see any other hands. Are we okay? Cool. Skip. Oh, another one? Yeah. Liam, one more. Liam? So I don't come disconnect. <laughs> All right, Liam, we'll have to take it offline then if we can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can. Nearly. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, yeah, we've got the final one. Computer. Probably need to have this uh, computer service. Uh, one more for Marius. Um, you said earlier that uh, you want to throw as many punches to Leinster as you can. W what does that entail? Because they are uh, very sound defensively. We know that they play through the phases. They they like building up towards a, a bit of a crescendo. Um, the punches that you have in mind. What can you talk us through? Uh, you know what those punches might entail. I think that's all. Obviously, areas where you know we can, con like we said earlier, is what we can control. And I think you know set piece. Is something we proud ourselves on lately we've been really good there so if we can go set piece whatever we want to do we want to make it a competition so um for us it's winning the breakdown um to make sure we get quick ball uh, we know they thrive on quick ball so we want to make sure that we slow them down we want to stop them on defense and we obviously want to be direct first you know um so in all aspects of the game we want to make sure that we we beat them wherever we can um so yeah it's 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 simple for us and it's nothing special we just want to make sure that we uh, as you, when you put yourself in as many battles as you can eventually you'll come up at, on top thanks guys thank you Liam. colleagues thank you very much mara jules bye donkey thank you thanks Amo. Thank bye, you. bye. Cheers, thank you. Bye-bye.